Well, it's certainly been a while since I've been sitting in the engine room of Last Affair, so I am actually getting ready to change the air conditioner water circulation pump, which went out in Last Affair, our 43-foot Gulf Star. Uh, you, know, you own a boat, there's maintenance to be done, and I hate to say it, but if you're not on the boat, the maintenance piles up. I mean, just coming down here below, I can already see where it's been moist and moldy a little bit in some places. On the bottom sides of the cabinets, I can see it. It needs a good bleach scrub down, and ugh. It's going to be a lot of work, but uh, yeah, that's the next step down here. Let me get this air conditioner pump off. I'll show you. So these white, this white hose here is part of my um, water circulation pump. So you can see it comes into a strainer, out of the strainer, into the pump. It's kind of behind these lines here. And then out of the pump, it goes out to a set of T-valves. And you, it's a little difficult to see them. They're right behind there. And the T-valves control whether or not the water goes to the forward air conditioning unit or the rear air conditioning unit. Um, this right here is a clean-out, which I'll end up doing today. Since this hasn't been running, I'm sure there's a little bit of the Chifunk to River funk in the system. So I've got to blow it all out of there. But let me get the electrical lines disconnected from this motor to start. All right, I've got the AC circulation motor uh, pulled out of last affair uh, and now I'm back over on Dream Chaser. I have a battery charger on the generator because the shore power actually does not charge that here. So I want to get that topped off and in the meantime I've just loosened up the jib sheets here on Dream Chaser. We're going to go up onto the uh, we're going to go up onto the bow right here and I'm going to go ahead and untie the roller furler line so I can go ahead and get a new roller furler line. I want to get one that's a bigger diameter makes it a little bit easier to pull this in given the uh, square footage on that head saw. I'm very happy to see that my uh, generator is running just fine, power in the air conditioner and all the panels. I feel like I might need to do an impeller change on this. This doesn't look like a whole lot of uh, water coming out of there. Certainly some, what's some exhaust fumes on that diesel, huh? never do take for granted the flexibility of being able to work remote. So I am in Louisiana, as you guys know, and this is my office setting today. So as I worked on Last Affair this morning on the um, air conditioner circulation pump, I noticed it definitely needs to be replaced. So I went up to West Marine and their supplies are just limited like crazy there. So I asked if they had any at the West Marine in the next town over. And she said, well, that one closed 18 months ago. Not being in the air anymore, I lost sight of that. Um, also, I asked if there was one closer to New Orleans and she said there was, and she checked the stock. It looked like they had it. So she called them and no go, they didn't have a pump either. So I was able to find an air conditioner circulation pump. Um, still not sure if it's going to be air cooled or water cooled. They had an air cooled one there. I would like to have the water cooled Marsh pump, but I don't think that's the brand they use. So beggars can't be choosers. I am heading um, south from the north shore of Louisiana down to um, the south shore. And I haven't driven over this bridge in quite some time since we've been here. This is the, uh, the 24 or 26 mile. 24, I'm trying to remember now. I think it's 23.8 or 25.8, I can't recall. But the very, very long bridge that goes north and south over Lake Pontchartrain. Um, so I've got 15.6 miles left to go. And it is always interesting when you're out in the middle of this and you can't see land on either side. That's pretty cool. So, anyway. Let me get back to uh, two wheels, uh, two hands on the wheel, and head on down to this uh, sea chest store to pick up the pump. It is blazing hot. I forgot how hot it gets here in Louisiana. The mornings will be 68 degrees at 6 a.m., and by 8 a.m., it's 85. Um, by 9.30 a.m., it's 100. <laughs> and that's just in you know late June. Um, heck, summer's not even officially here yet. Oh, boy, it's brutal. So. I've been getting the majority of my work done on the boats early, early in the morning. Um, and then, you know, I go go to work and then in the afternoon I run and get any parts that I need so that for the very next morning I can hit the boat again and work on it. Um, I just got out of sea chest and yeah, forgive the mask, right? Still, you know, got to be socially distant and wear your mask in public for the most part. But $455 for this Dometic pump, man, they are proud of these sons of guns for sure. Here's the old boat yard where I did so much work on my boat. 
I know it's new owners over here, but somewhere in that building is still my uh, my wooden mizzen mast and probably some of my old supplies that I had left in there when we sailed the boat back. Kind of a wild little place on the south coast of Lake Pontchartrain. As you just saw in the video, I went to Sea Chest and I picked up one of these Dometic pumps. And um, I decided after leaving there that I, I couldn't believe the price of it. It was 400 and it was ended up being 490 something dollars with tax, so just shy of 500 bucks. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go check out that West Marine that the other location near me called and said they didn't have any in stock. Uh, because she was showing some in the computer when she was waiting on a lady who came back and said she couldn't see them any, any on the shelf. I thought, you know what, let me just check. They're close enough. So I drove the four or five miles over to West Marine um, in New Orleans from the sea chest place where I had just bought that motor. And I walked in the door and sure enough, I saw one on the shelf. I pulled it out. It's the exact same make, model, gallons uh, per hour output, the exact same pump, same brand, Dometic. Um, and it was $339, so about $370 with tax. Now, that's more than a $100 difference for the exact same pump. And I know everybody likes to say West Marine's crazy expensive, and on some things, they can be. Um, but that was unbelievable. I, I actually told her, I said, can you hold this at the counter? I want to go make a phone call and see if I can um, return this before I buy another one here. So I called the company back and I'm like, hey, I just came by to get that um, that pump. Is there any chance I can return it? The guy says, well, we don't take returns on on electric equipment. I'm like, dude, I like pulled out of your parking lot like nine minutes ago. Are you sure? Uh, and he says, hang on, let me check. And he goes back and says, yeah, we'll, we'll go ahead and do it. Uh, he said, what's the problem? And I said, well, it's just not going to work for me. I left it very vague. Um, he says, all right, we'll do it as long as you know you didn't you didn't hook it up or anything. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll be back there in five minutes. So I bought the pump at West Marine, 370 something, and I drove back over to Sea Chest and returned that one. Um, and the owner's son came out, who I've worked with a lot before, and he usually was pretty reasonable on prices. This was just a little bit crazy, and it wasn't the owner's son that I dealt with when I picked it up. So they even made a comment to the guy, I'm like, oh my gosh, you guys are proud of these. Like, that's way overpriced. And he's like, yeah, that's what they go for. So I kind of figure, well, I'm stuck and I need it. Um, so when I went, when I brought it back and I talked to the owner's son, um, he kind of came out. And he says, "Oh, so it's not going to work for you, huh?" I just said, "Yeah, it's not going to work." He says, "Yeah, it must not have been the right fit. I'm sure you needed the water cooled one." Uh, and I just didn't, I didn't correct him. I didn't want to say no. I found it for 120 bucks cheaper, and I just don't want to pay the difference. But that's ultimately what it ended up being. And I've used like this is not a negative thing. I've used Sea Chest a lot, and they have great supplies. And I've bought a lot of things from them. Um, but I would say shop around, and if you think the price is high, ask them about it and see if they can do something a little bit better. Uh, that was um, that's a little just a little bit too much markup. Like I don't mind somebody making money on it, but but come on, that that just seems, you know, to to be to be 25 percent higher than another retailer. Now keep in mind, both of these retailers are making a good margin on this particular product, which is crazy. So anyway, I returned it, but I did get the pump in and I got it mounted down in uh, Last Affair and the air conditioner kicked right back on once the water circulation pump was in place. I did keep the old one because I believe it's just the electric motor that's bad. So I'm gonna do a little bit of work on that uh, once I get back to uh, to Florida and just have, a, have some time to kill. I'm gonna see if I can uh, rebuild it or maybe just buy a motor itself instead of the whole pump and the motor assembly uh, and have a nice spare for me. Uh, with, with as many air conditioners we have on these boats, we'll use it eventually. <laughs> so I'd be truly lying if I didn't say it was great to be back out on the water. Uh, I've been impressed, you know, Dream Chaser needed a lot of stuff done, little things, but all in all, uh, we got back here and everything fired right out. The battery was dead on the generator, but once it was charged, it went through one cranking cycle and didn't start, the second one started right up. So it's definitely working well. It's nice to see everything sort of operational. Uh, even the dinghy fired up after just a couple of shots. So yeah, all in all, I'm fairly pleased. The downside is the air conditioners on here are just not running efficiently. So they really need to be replaced. Uh, it'll be a hot trip back to Florida, but I think that's uh, you know easy enough. It'll be much easier to fix those things at home than here. Uh, and they're not necessary for the safety of the boat, just the comfort. <laughs>
so we just did a small little jaunt here. We uh, took the boat out of the marina just to get it off the dock, make sure everything was working well. And we came about five or six miles down the Chifuncta River to the Highway um, 22 Madisonville Bridge. We didn't bother going through the bridge. We just stopped right there, uh, practiced a couple of docking maneuvers since it's been a while since we've done that, and then uh, made a U-turn in the busy traffic, uh, and then sort of coming back up the river now. So. Yeah, it's kind of cool. As a matter of fact, I'll show you in just a second. On the right-hand side is the state park where we have the camper, where we've been staying this week while we'll be doing all the work on the boat. So yeah, it's uh, good stuff, good stuff. And it's busy. Uh, you know, the weekend and everybody down here in the bayou is running around on the river. Jet skis and families tubing, lots of pontoon boats. This is a fun river just to tool up and down for sure. We used to do little dinghy rides here all the time. We wouldn't take the big boat out, but hop in the dinghy and go exploring through some of these little by using canals. I'll show you some when we get up by some. I mentioned these little bayous off the river. Here's an example of one. There's a turnoff right there, a couple of houses in it. Pretty neat. these little bayous off the side. All right, we're gonna test our autopilot here. I don't know if you just see this. It looks like we've got about a 45 degree bend in the river here. So, let's do that. We'll go one, two, three, 40 degrees. Pretty damn good. Well, I got a boat coming, so I'm going to go auto. Well, I certainly hope you enjoyed the ride along the river with us and this is the footage from the boat before we left and then you can see we could not get back in the slip with the wind the way it was backing in so we uh, tried about three times and then finally just decided to nose in and we would go out the next day and turn it around I uh, certainly hope you enjoyed this week's video as you can imagine it was super for us to get the boat off the dock we enjoyed the heck out of it and we will see you all next Friday so we wish you a fair winds and a following C from the crew aboard Dream Chaser. Mm -hmm.